The World's Worst Teachers by David Walliams. In Biscuit Assortment, the opera, a dozen different biscuits came alive, stepped out of the tin and began singing in Italian. The opera was the show Palava considered to be her absolute masterpiece. Pink wafer, chocolate finger, ginger nut bourbon, jammy dodger and custard cream were all at war as to who was the ruler of the magical kingdom of Biscuit Tinland. It was even worse than it sounds, and I know it sounds horrific. The most terrible thing that could ever happen to you, if you were a pupil at Lady Ostentatious's School for Posh Girls, was to be cast in one of Palava's productions. As it was a boarding school, it was impossible to escape being in one. Each term, Miss Palava posted a list of who was playing who on the notice board. The girls all called it the List of Doom. There was no saying no. Any girl who did this was expelled on the spot and forced to go to a less posh school, thereby bringing shame upon her family forever. Rehearsals for a Palava production would go on for months, sometimes even years, often through the night. Worst of all, Miss Palava would scream at you if you forgot a line or moved to the wrong spot of the stage. No, if you are ruining if it. Now do it again and again and again and again until you get if it right. The poor girls would burst into hit tears. Not that the teacher cared. All she cared about was her precious play and she demanded nothing short of perfection. One morning, Miss Palava was called into the headmistress's office. This was not an everyday occurrence, so the drama teacher's mind immediately began whirling as to why she'd been summoned. Were her plans for drama-themed food in the dining hall finally going to come to fruition? Was she about to receive a Lifetime Achievement Award for services to drama? Was the school going to be demolished so her plans for a brand new thousand seater theatre could be built, called of course the Palava Memorial Theatre? Was the headmistress stepping down and Miss Palava taking over, allowing her to turn Lady Ostentatiouses into a drama school with lessons only in drama, drama and more drama? Or, best of all, was she going to be made a dame by Her Majesty the Queen? Dame Paloma Palava had a lovely ring to it. The answers to all these questions was a big, fat no. But Miss Palava didn't know that yet. The school secretary led her into the headmistress's oak-panelled office, as you might expect from a school so drenched in history. The room was full of leather-bound books and oil paintings of the precious previous headmistresses. You sent it for me, O oh great one, announced Palava as she wafted into the room, her cape trailing behind her. It is I, the greatest drama teacher the world has ever known, Miss Palava. Yes, one knows who you are, snapped the frightfully posh headmistress. She was stern at the best of times. The lady didn't have time for the silly teacher and her even sillier productions. Sit down, she ordered. Miss Palava lowered herself onto the chair slowly and theatrically. It took a few minutes for her bottom to actually reach the seat. Finally, the headmistress could begin. One has brought you here today as one needs to talk about what you have proposed for this year's school play, the complete works of William Shakespeare. Unabridged. Yes, replied the headmistress warily. That is if William Shakespeare the playwright, if not William Shakespeare my pet goldfish. One gathered that. One assumes your pet goldfish hasn't written any plays. One or two, but they are not great. They tend to go round and round in circles like him. The headmistress rolled her eyes. Miss Palava really was bananas. Miss Palava, one is saying no. That was a word Miss Palava never heard. She was such a force of nature that no one ever said no to her. After the shock had set in, she began her performance. Tears swelled in her eyes. Her voice began to wobble with emotion. But this is my masterpiece. This will make me go down in history as the greatest drama teacher who ever lived. It has never been done before. No stage... All 37 of Shakespeare's plays and presented them in one evening of wonderment. But it won't just be one evening, will it, Miss Palava? 
The teacher thought for a moment. Maths was not her strong suit. But each play ran for three or four hours. So she began attempting to work it out. Mm, no. So how long would it take to stage all 37 of Shakespeare's often posterior, numbingly long plays? No, if longer than a week. A week? Even the headmistress was flabbergasted. It could be longer if thou so wish if I could include if Shakespeare's sonnets. No, bellowed the headmistress. She was losing her patience now. No if to the sonnets, but yes if to the 37 plays, asked Miss Palava hopefully. No, no if, yes if, it's a no if. One means, yes, it is a no. And Miss Palava, henceforth, one has decreed that there will be no more school plays ever. The teacher was, for once, stunned into silence. They bring only misery to those who are in them, and even greater misery to those who have to sit through them. One has consulted with the school council, and all the girls here want your theatre room converted into a badminton practice. Badminton practice, if? Miss Palava couldn't believe her ears. This was an insult of epic proportions. Headmistress, do I hear thee correctly? Art thou saying no if t to the very staging of all 37 of Shakespeare's plays so the girls can have if a... So the girls can hit if a... She could barely bring herself to say it. Shuttlecock. Yes, I am, replied the headmistress. Now, Miss Palava, one has an extremely posh school to run. Good day. With that, she stood and showed the teacher the door. Miss Palava remained sitting and stared straight ahead. Miss Palava? Miss Palava! The headmistress waved her hand in front of the lady's eyes, but there was no response. Woe, woe, and thrice woe, whispered the teacher to herself. It sounded like the first crackle of thunder when you hear a storm brewing. Miss Palava, please don't make a drama out of this. Woe! She wailed in reply. And the sound was so piercing that the glass in the windows exploded. The oil paintings fell from the walls and the leather-bound books flew off the shelves. Stop that wailing at once, Miss Palava, ordered the headmistress. Out, out, out. She began shooing the teacher from her office. Shoo, shoo, shoo. Miss Palava staggered across the hallway, her cape fluttering behind her. She came to rest between two giant columns. Whoa! She wailed even louder than before. It was so loud the old school building began to crumble. A chandelier crashed down from the ceiling. Plaster exploded from the walls. Doors flew off their hinges. Girls and teachers began streaming out of their classrooms. Ah, no, help! Everyone escaped to the safety of the lawn, leaving Miss Palava wailing alone in the school building. This time, she pushed with all her strength against the two giant columns. Huge cracks began shooting across them. As the columns crumbled, so did the old stately home itself. The ceiling caved in, the walls caved in, everything that could have caved in, caved in. Soon, the historic Lady Ostentatious's school for posh girls was nothing more than a pile of rubble. A cloud of dust covered everyone and everything. As the dust slowly cleared, all the staff and pupils began to make out a lone figure amongst the rubble. The figure looked like a statue, standing motionless, covered from head to toe in grey dust and debris. Miss Palava called out the headmistress. On hearing her name, the statue came to life. She asked, hopefully, How if about I just direct 36 of Shakespeare's plays?